All right, with this WASH 2 Facebook Live update, I'm Chief Meteorologist Tony Manoffi getting back into uh, the groove of here tonight uh, with uh, the normal regularly scheduled Facebook Lives. Obviously, when there's a, a big storm headed our way, I'm on the air and can't do them. Um, but uh, trying to, this new technique uh, gave me like a one minute clip hits there. Um, I'll start to do that more often on a regular basis. They're actually uh, fairly easy to do. I'll get a little bit better at it as well. At any rate, I do want to uh, say uh, thank you for all the nice compliments and uh, all the kudos from you guys. And I really hope uh, that many of you that have lost your power get your power back uh, very, very quickly here uh, because I know it's, it's no fun uh, living without AC, no fun living uh, without connecting to the world, your TV, uh, this, that, and the other. And more importantly, I just want to make sure that uh, uh, folks know that we're thinking about you and them. And, um, um, you know, as we you know, do this cleanup stuff here through the upcoming weekend, just want you guys to be careful. Uh, safety is, uh, for me, uh, utmost importance. And um, I tell you, you know, just hearing the stories of uh, the fatalities today of uh, folks with heart attacks while cleaning up, you know, and, and you know, it just reminds me to remind you that, you know, just your, your safety is primary to us. You know, if you're uh, thinking about getting on the roof and you're not as agile as a, a 20 or a 30 year old, you know, let them let them take care of it uh, for you instead of uh, uh, hurting yourself. Um, the other thing is that um, I, I want to give kudos to uh, my, my fellow team. I think Eric, I think uh, Kellyanne, Marquise and Cam, uh, they spent uh, plenty of hours here. Uh, uh, working on and updating these forecasts for everyone, literally every six hours, uh, fine-tuning and honing in on those county-by-county county graphics every time a, uh, an advisory came down is, is a lot of work, especially when we're on the air and, and trying to uh, you know, give you guys those county-by-county county updates. We know that those are, are certainly the, the most important for, uh, for you guys. You're, you know, you want to know what's going on in the area. You know, we had that tornado uh, outbreak to start uh, our, our coverage yesterday and um, just want you to know sometimes we do have to focus in on those areas first with the reminder that it's you know we've got to also think about the rest of the area especially when there's a, a hurricane you know it's it's easy uh, to uh, focus in on that one area but sometimes we have to remind ourselves and reset. And that's kind of what Cam got into the groove of doing there once we got going there. So uh, so that everybody gets some love, not just the tornado warned areas when, you know, Milton was coming ashore. All right. So the big story today that we got, and guys, thank you again for all those nice notes, and I do appreciate that. Uh, Bavard County, uh, this, afternoon, uh, this afternoon we got confirmation uh, from the National Weather Service of a uh, – a confirmed tornado, EF1, with winds of 85 to uh, 95 miles an hour um, uh, in and around the Cocoa Beach area. Uh, the water spout came ashore uh, near Royal Towers Crossing and then moved off towards the west, towards the, the Merritt Island area before, uh, before weakening. So, uh, you know, this was uh, an historic outbreak uh, for tornadoes in a tropical system. There, there's just absolutely no doubt about that. Uh, I do want to take you outside and, and get to a calmer, a more comfortable note. You can see outside right now. Look at these temperatures behind um, Milton. We're in the low 70s. It feels great out there. Catherine Wood, uh, excellent. I love hearing that. And uh, it's still raining in Cocoa. Yeah, uh, I can't handle it. Well, Terry, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk a little bit about that here in just a second. Let me uh, get through just a couple of uh, uh, quick little notes here and uh, just kind of the surge. And the rivers are still the most important thing we got to cover before uh, we move on to that other element that you were hinting at. And I'm, I promise me I will do that for you. Palm Coast, Daytona Beach, right around 30 miles an hour. Uh, and when we take a look at the satellite loop, you'll clearly be able to see why. There's our storm system. Post-tropical, it's a simple way of saying it. it's not a warm core system anymore. Tropical systems are warm from the surface all the way up. Uh, this uh, starts getting into the upper level jet streams, colder. It starts to sink down into the core there, and that's why we call it uh, post-tropical. Uh, the track this morning, when Cam and I were on the air, uh, came across uh, Siesta Key, very close to Sarasota, moved into Polk County right around midnight, and then uh, weakened to a Cat 1 uh, very early uh, Thursday morning into Osceola County before moving offshore 
uh, between about 4 or 5 and o'clock in the morning. And look at that very heavy rain there on the north side. Now, in its wake, we still have a ton of folks uh, without power. Uh, it was That was unbelievable on the back side, but along the coast, you're absolutely right for those of you that were in Brevard, Flagler, Volusia County. That strengthening system in combination with that height in the north really um, uh, created a significant wind event along the coast. Uh, we'll get to those rainfall totals. Promise I got that there for you. Uh, here's a look at uh, how many folks are still without power at this hour. Uh, we're looking at uh, 110 now in uh, Orange County, 170 in Volusia, 150 there uh, over towards uh, Polk County, and still 72,000 people in uh, Seminole County and 88 in Lee County without power. Uh, hi, Tony, send a lot of power. Yeah, Jill, they're working on it. They, the, the men and women, uh, they are they are definitely working hard for you guys. I promise you that. We've done so many stories on that uh, today. Uh, here's a look now at the tornado count for the three weather service offices out of Miami, Tampa, and Melbourne. 126, 126 of them. Um, Jidwell, I'm going to get to that, speak to that here in a second. And so just give me a moment and I'll talk about uh, what the, the models are trying to sniff out or what they're thinking may potentially happen. Uh, down the road. It's uh, not anything imminent for sure. I don't want you to get caught up in any social media junk hype. Um, I think uh, there's a lot of folks that post a lot of nonsense out there when it comes to these storms without the sensitivity of what people just went through and that that you really really need to be careful with. So I get it. I understand it um, and, and trust me having just been through two of these with you guys and all the hours we're putting in uh, I, 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 I'm not a fan of that at all. So here we go. The outbreak yesterday, 126 warnings, second to the Alabama-Tuscaloosa tornado event that happened in 2011. Uh, that one uh, uh, yeah, had a lot of fatalities as well. All right, water vapor channel, and then we'll get to the tropics here in just a second. Uh, there's a look now at the satellite. Now, this is at 20,000 feet, 15,000, 20,000 feet up. Then you got the dry air over us. However, at the surface, as you clearly saw, uh, we still have a lot of rain and some gusty winds along the coast. Let's take a look now at the live radar here. You can see the showers near New Smyrna Beach, Oak Hill. Nowhere near what we were dealing with last night. So I want to make that imminently clear to everybody. Port St. John over towards Barefoot Bay. A couple showers there. Now, somebody was asking about those rainfall amounts. I'll, I'll drive through that here and then a few other graphics and I think we do need to spend a little bit more time uh, on, on looking at what you're seeing out there in the tropical Atlantic, a lot of posts that uh, um, we're gonna we're gonna let you know what's really going on with that here in a second. Joanne, appreciate you. Yep, we've got a great crew here. Uh, Cam and I, um, you know, we're we're getting more and more comfortable with each other. You know, uh, it just takes time. Like Eric and I, you know, it's, uh, we're we're synced. We get it. Um, Cam and I are getting there. It's uh, you know. She hasn't worked with me, obviously, as long as, as Eric, but uh, she's a wonderful lady, incredibly hard worker, um, and, I, and I, I, I really appreciate the folks that work hard, trust me, more than anything else. i got to work as a team in unison, and the whole team here does that, so that's, that's the beauty. Bushnell, 10 inches. Popka 10.8, uh, Longwood 12.1. Uh, there's a look now at uh, Geneva, Chuliota, most of Seminole County, uh, anywhere from 10 to 13 inches of rain. Um, Thank you, David. Appreciate you, Bubby. Back, you guys are you guys are very kind. Uh, so look at Deltona, back towards Osteen, 10, 15, even 16 plus inches of rain. There was a drop off now once you got up towards Citra in comparison to down south. Uh, Marineland, Palm Coast, Bunnell, you all did pretty well, anywhere from about five to nine inches. Uh, Brenda, you sound like you have the same setup I do, and, and, and same here, by the way. Um, taking a look at the the, the wave action. Uh, it is very, very rough along our coast. Um, this is not a weekend to think about boating or, or swimming. Uh, the, the state of the seas is incredibly, incredibly rough. Look at that, 20-foot seas over the, uh, the open waters there. So that, that's another reason to stay away. Uh, the wind advisory, I think, has just expired. Let me see something. Nope, they kept it up there in Flagler County. Um, uh, that's going to be a new time. I'm going to have to check that here. But uh, a couple of other things here. Hi, surf. <clears throat> advisory <clears throat> Friday mm -hmm. <clears throat> through Friday night 10 to 15 foot breaking waves through then uh, 
Robin Leone, Daytona. Uh, I'll go back to that here real quick for you. Hang on a second. <clears throat> All right, let's get up to the new Smyrna, about 10. Daytona, 12 to 15 inches of rain up towards Del Deltona. Mm -hmm. All right, so that's a look at that. All right, let's do this. Let's keep the show moving. We do have um, 4 a.m., a uh, 4 p.m. rather, coastal flood warning. Now that's important here, especially during times of high tide. No power here in Port Orange Rose, so we're obviously getting you on the cell phone. There we go. <clears throat> the uh, next high tide just happened a couple of minutes ago up there in Flagler Beach, so I'll I'll re rack these uh, for. Um, tonight and tomorrow coming up tonight 11 so one thing we need to keep oh this is the wave action check this out here so 13 to 20 right now 10 to 15 seas on friday breaker 7 to 12 that is just insane um there you go robin yep you guys got a lot no doubt about that uh david appreciate you my friend uh wanda what kind of damage did you have flooding damage or wind damage or a little bit of both just out of curiosity uh, Becky, it was very, very, very close to you. I'm excited. Uh, Anthony Ippolito, I'm just going to be happy to sleep, uh, period. All right, I want to do some uh, uh, river-level stuff, and then I'm going to get to the tropics uh, for you guys. Uh, I think so. Yep. No power where I live, says Angela. David Drake, so, yep, there we go. Well said, Dave. Uh, there we go. All right, so let's let's do these rivers. I think this is important. Little Wakaiva. It goes up and down fairly quickly. So we're at 29.9, uh, Friday 29.57, and then back into moderate flood states there uh, by Saturday. Uh, moving along here to the St. John's at Astor. Right now, 448. We're going to stay in major flood stage right through Saturday. And then when we get to the land, here's the land. <clears throat> uh, moderate flood stage to major flood stage as it continues to rise. Uh, thank you, Misty Wood. You are, you are very, very... The kind I do appreciate uh, the, the the kind words from from you and everybody in here tonight. It's uh, it's nice to know that uh, we're doing a good job for you guys. And the St. John's River near Sanford, we're going to continue to watch that flood stage is five five by Saturday at six five minor flood stage there, and then up towards Lake Harney, we get to moderate flood stage here as we get you into Friday evening. Uh, David, appreciate you. What about Lake Monroe? And Osteen, yep. Uh, so they're they're going to be they're not they're not as bad. Let me double check one thing here. Give me a second. Uh, Lake Jessup, Econ. Let's see here. There we go. Aster, the wind. Going looking for a couple. All right, so we'll, I'll I'll look that up here in a second. All right, let me do this. Um, Okay, so let's head to the tropics. Here's what you need to know right now. And that is that when you look at the full tropical Atlantic here, right, there's, you know, a few little features out there. But, but the, again, I'm not going to, I'm not worried about uh, these features at all. This is uh, right out here. This is Leslie, okay. And then there's a little piece of energy coming off near the Cabo Verde. We'll watch that. And then there's uh, Post Milton. So that's a look at that. So let's let's um, try to squash this media hype on, on something else coming our way uh, that you've seen multiple posts on and stuff like that. I want to make this abundantly clear. I believe it is abundantly uh, not smart to post anything um, nine ten days out I, I or eight eight nine ten days out even even if you're seeing uh, multiple um, models hinting at something um, what I would do is I would show the water vapor channel not isobars and, and a, a low pressure you know, trying to draw what you think is happening but if you look there towards the Caribbean there's a front dropping south right and then there's that little feature right there let me widen out this view here real quick. I want to just do this here. So we got camera. We got, you know, we got 
this camera here. So let's just do this. I'm going to do that right there. I think that's a better setup. Go ahead. I'm going to fix this real quick. And then now we're going to play this again. Sorry about that, folks. Fixing things on the fly for you. All right. So here we go. We have front there, a little piece of energy that does try to bubble on up in the northwestern the Caribbean, right around the 15th. There's also a fairly significant front that drops into central Florida that's going to give us some wonderful weather. While that's going on, there's that feature now, uh, kind of uh, pulling along the Yucatan uh, Peninsula and then moving up to the north and the west. So there is a hint of some moisture there. Does one run of one model mean that something's coming our way? No, it doesn't. Especially not... 10 days out. I mean, I just think that's insane. Um, you know, so what you should do is say, look, hey, the moisture is is beginning to plume and bubble up here in the northwestern Caribbean. And, and then, then maybe you show the euro as well. If, if you see it in two locations, then maybe you have some. Ah, looks like I got the same thing. Hey, give me one second. I'm just going to need to widen out the euro. So I do want to show you the, uh, the euro as well. Give me one second. Do this. I'm going to hit save save sorry about that guys i thought i had that view didn't take my view from earlier um so again um, people are you know hyping this up to be nadine this crazy wild storm that's going to wreak havoc so the euro has a little something there too but it has a much stronger front coming through miami down to havana and then you see the moisture begin to pull back up so and then there's another incredibly strong front coming into the houston area so you know, you start getting into mid to late October, there's a much greater chance for cold fronts coming in and keeping things well to the south. So the bottom line here for me is do both the Euro and the GFS have something in the northwestern Caribbean that comes into the Gulf? Yes. Uh, are, are they? Does that mean that, you know, we've got another storm coming our way? Absolutely not. No way. No way. Now, if this persists for the next eight or nine days, yeah, then, then you know, it, it's, an, it's an issue. I think all we can do, so the GFS has a hurricane and coming into Nicaragua and Honduras, then weakening over land. The euro has nothing, uh, considerably weaker, and then it moves west into Central America. Now, I got to tell you, the euro, uh, excuse me, the GFS has been as far east as the eastern side of the state of Florida. It's been... Uh, into Mexico, it's been into Texas, it's been into Louisiana, uh, so there's there's been multiple locations of this particular feature over the last two to three days, and and people are jumping all over that, uh, and and saying, oh, there's Nadine, uh, Nadine may come, uh, but I think it's n not too smart to be saying, hey, this is going to develop, it's ten days out. Uh, there's no invest. There's no, um, you know, real credence to this this far out. It's not even there yet. And that's the point I'm trying to make. So to uh, to try to make something out of nothing right now, I, I just think is uh, just not a smart thing to do. I think you can show the euro and the GFS and say, hey, look, the models are hinting at something here. You know, I'm not worried about anything right now, but I do want you to keep checking back in uh, over the, you know, the next seven. Uh, so five to seven days in the short run to see what, if anything, uh, is likely to develop. Historically speaking, though, if something does develop, it's not going to go west. It'll come into, like Wilma, it'll be coming in southwest Florida, Cuba, and then shoot out towards Bermuda. That That is, climatologically speaking, where tropical features go uh, mid to late October. So just, just for the record. All right, seven day. Let's get it done. Let's talk about... Um, the next seven days, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, oh, I love this weather. Highs in the 80s, lows in the 60s, and in fact, towards Wednesday and Thursday, it gets even better. We're talking about temperatures in the in the 80s, so um, there you go. Uh, I, we're going in the right direction. That's the bottom line. Uh, so th that's what I'm preaching tonight. You're going to see a lot of stuff on social media about Nadine uh, developing 10 days out in the Caribbean or the Gulf. Way, 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 way too early to go with that scenario on the air right now, or on the air. You know, for me, you know, you do show that there's moisture pulling up, but you don't say Nadine is coming. We don't know that. There's nothing there yet. That's just nonsense. Anyway, I'm going to keep this one a uh, little short tonight. I've been trying to save my voice. Obviously, it's been a, a big week of um, 
of um, you know talking and, and spending long hours here. So I'm going to try to uh, just give you the 20 minutes and jump out and not do the whole global thing we do around the world. But the things will get back to normal there uh, on Monday. And if my cruise does go out, my anniversary cruise, you know, I won't be here next week. Uh, I, I'm still waiting on whether or not that's going to happen or, or not, yeah, with uh, with all that's taking place. So I'll keep you posted on that. If I'm here, I'm doing it. If I'm not, um, I'm you know maybe I do something on my phone. I'm not sure. Of, but either way, I'll be keeping an eye on things for you guys. And, and thanks again for checking in with us this week and sticking with WASH. We do appreciate it. And for all those shares and likes, uh, that as well means a lot to me. It means we're trying to get that information out to everybody. And I think... You know, looking back, I think this might might be one of those storms where I felt really good going into it. I think a lot of people listened, and uh, that's always a beautiful thing. So I just want you guys to stay safe. If you're doing any cleanup this week, um, you know, be smart about it. I don't want you, you know, on the roof, slipping or anything like that. We're thinking about you and your families, especially those of you that have lost your power. We hope that you get it back soon. If you've been flooded out, um, you know, I just hope the insurance company or uh, whomever you're dealing with uh, can get to you quickly and, and, and try to get your life back to what it normally is. And I, I know that Central Floridians are tough. They're strong. Uh, they come together and they help each other out. And, uh, you know, that's what's going to happen here. We're going to get through this. We're going to get through any storm that comes our way. All right, guys, have a great night. Uh, thanks for uh, tuning us in this week. And I'll see you tonight at 10 on the CW18 and again at 11 on West 2 News. Take care.